<laughs> How are you, Miss Jay? Oh, just fine. Thanks, Bert. Uh, can I talk to you a second? Yeah, Bert. Excuse me, honey. You better have some good news for me, boy. I get McCullough and Bailey breathing down my spine because no worker showed up again this morning. Well, those pickers are hanging in there tough. I don't know how they're doing it, but they are. Well, then break them. Well, you told me that nobody got enough food out of that market to feed a gnat. I swear to you, Mr. Jerry, if they got a mouthful, it'd be a lot. They got a cave in pretty soon. Well, they better. Because that crop ain't going to last any more than a couple of days. These skies open up, and we're awash. And you told me that wouldn't happen. Don't worry. I am worried. And that means you better be worried, too. OK, OK. I'll get Giddings, and we'll get them out of there tomorrow. Now, those bulldogs we had to fight with at the market, they was checked out of the hotel when we got there this morning. I'm damn sure they weren't union reps. That's all we need, a couple of Robin Hood types. Well, they're probably just passing through. Long gone by now. What are you doing with them beans? I spend seven hours in every bean in that stinking pot. I don't want them bashed around like a bucket of bolts when it says stir them beans. Stir them. Not a bludgeon murder. Oh. Looks like it's about time for the main course. Down here, you two. Ladies and gentlemen, we apologize for interrupting your party with gunfire, but it was the only way that we could collect Mr. Jarrett's generous food donation without getting blown out of our socks by his bodyguards. Now, Miss Allen here will supervise the loading of the truck, and I'm sure you four gentlemen will be happy to assist the lady. You four, now! Let's go. You boys want to move this pig and be careful not to drop the apple, please. I don't know what you fellas think you're doing, but you're never going to get away with this. You've shorted your workers pay to the degree they can't feed their families. There's hungry women and children out there. Hungry children? If they don't want to work for me, they can get another job. No, they can't. They've already been here 10 weeks. It's too late in the season for them to go anywhere else. Not counting the fact it's 50 miles to the nearest bus station and they have no means of transportation. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Jarrett. So, to make things right, I think you ought to cough up what you owe them right now. Unless, of course, you want us to take you back and you can explain it to the workers without your guard. Read him the score, face. You got 45 workers, you shorted $20 a week. That's $900 for 10 weeks or... Uh, $9,000 you owe us. We're not counting for what you cheated them out of at the market, which is what put them in this situation in the first place. Of course, we uh, would look kindly on any donations. That diamond ring you're wearing there, for instance. Nice. About uh, 8500 How do you know that? Hobby of mine. That uh, leaves us a $1,000 U.S. plus 9.9% .9 interest of $891 and 25 cents. Annie up, Jared. Mm. <clears throat> ah, $1,500, very good. Well, that still leaves us uh, $391 and 25 cents. Don't you want to help out your boss, pal? It's four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars. Oh, here's your change. Let's see. That's uh, eight dollars and uh, seventy-five cents. Your heart's in the right place. I thank you. The A team thanks you. The newly founded Workers Cooperative thanks you. You're never going to get away with this. You'll have a union in this valley over my dead body. That's exactly what I was telling our union members this morning. We're working on a theme song and uniforms, and I'm pushing for matching bow ties, and not that clip-on junk. Those are for geeks, and geeks are a whole other union. You're nuts! I know I'm not. I'm condiments. I've been promoted. Go, B.A. <laughs> I'm 
together nicely. You got a funny idea of how things come together. Look at the gate. Uh, watch how I make things come apart.